Those of you who know me know that I absolutely love fishing in America's West. Well, coming up on this episode of The New Fly Fisher, we are in one of my most favorite places of all time, Yellowstone Teton Territory. We're traveling up and down Highway 20 in search of giants, rainbows, browns, cutthroat, and cutbows. This is an unbelievable adventure, and I hope you join me as this big fish adventure starts right now on The New Fly Fisher. Ooh, that's a nice sized fish. What? <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Visit Idaho, Yellowstone Teton Territory, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada. Let's take a look at some of the big rainbows we've caught fishing in Yellowstone Teton territory. So the weather's changed here um, on the Henry's Fork over the last couple of days and it's actually bluebird nice and, uh, and these fish aren't liking it. So we're gonna change things up on Logan's suggestion to change things up a little bit, we're actually gonna put a swing into our um, presentation today. So what I'm doing is I'm casting this hopper dropper 90 degrees across with a big mend upstream and I'm, let, and I'm letting it fish down on a dead drift. We've got two nymphs underneath the hopper. What happens at the end of the cast is I'm going to let it come tight out in its lane, but I'm gonna stack mend the line so that the fly line is, is straight upstream from the fly. Then I'm gonna give it a little flick over to the left, let it come across, little flick over to the left, let it come across, another, till it's 90 degrees. So instead of swinging it like you would swinging steelhead or salmon, you're actually doing micro swings in the full presentation. Every time you do one of those smaller mends, it creates the fly, the nymphs to move a little bit. And that could be the trigger to get these big brown trout and rainbow trout to eat. Decent fish. So we just stopped for lunch. We're just about to, like we're still on the bank <laughs> and we're just about to kick off. And I decided to throw the dry dropper out into this run and first cast of the afternoon. It's a good one. Big tail. Yeah. Try to keep him over here out of that stuff. Okay, now come back up to the boat. Nice work. Sweet, man. Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh. That's great fish. Now, is that typical, a typical fish that you catch here at a, at a Henry's say, Fork? I would say that's for this float, it's probably average, maybe slightly bigger than average. Nice. Henry's Fork rainbow trout. That'll play, won't it? That's great. This afternoon it's gonna turn on. It's gonna be good. <laughs> Nice work. Fish. Oh, another good brown. Are you kidding me? Get him on the reel. He's going uptown. Oh, it's a rainbow. Yeah. Sweet. Head up, slide, 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 back, 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 back. There you go. All right, look at that. Look at the colors on that. It's lit right up, just like that rainbow. Yep. This evening here on the Henry's Fork, I'm I'm working my way upstream. And I've actually got three pieces of structure that I'm fishing as I'm methodically moving up. 
I've got this set of logs over on my left that are creating their own seams and their own pieces of structure, as well as being structure themselves. Then I've got a deeper area in the middle, which might hold some fish, but what I'm really excited about is the rock that's directly ahead of me and the two seams that it's throwing on either side of it. So as I take a couple steps up, I'll put this chubby Chernobyl into each piece of structure, two, three, take another couple steps up, one, two, three, effectively covering all the water. Always keeping an eye on the chubby because I do have two titanium uh, nymphs on underneath this. So let's see what happens. All right, we got ourselves a good one here. It ate the ant, it ate the Chernobyl. I'm gonna get this guy in the reel. It's a big one, it's a big rainbow. I can see him. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Come on, buddy. Right out in the middle of this flat, there's a rock up here that is throwing two seams off. And uh, I'm fishing up to the rock, hitting each seam as I move up. And this guy came up and just whacked it. I'm gonna move him into the shallow water here. Never mind, I gotta rope him. Woohoo! good rainbow, man. What a good fish. Wild places and unreal rainbow trout. I'm just gonna get these flies out of here so I don't stick myself or stick this rainbow. Now there is a dr double dropper on this, so I have to be careful. And then I will show you what we're dealing with here. All right. like that. Good fish on a Chernobyl ant. Cannot beat it. Just incredible. Awesome, awesome, awesome. They started small and they slowly getting bigger. I'll take that all day long. Let's take a look at this absolutely giant hybrid that Phil Rowley caught while fishing right here in Island Park on Henry's Lake. Whacked it pretty good. Feels bigger. Now, it could have just buried in the weeds too, but when it took the fly, it was a solid thump and took it on the paws. I've been using quick strips with pauses three to four inch strips and the fly was just falling and it just zipped out of my hands. Henry's is known for big hybrids in excess of 10 pounds, even 15 pounds. So we've been hoping for something at least half of that. Oh, 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 oh my Lord. Scooper, my friend. <laughs> Look at that thing. Holy smokes. That's why you come to Idaho. That's Henry's Lake, one of the few places in North America that you can have the chance to do battle with something like this. The stories this fish could tell, the food it's eaten, it's spectacular. This has made my trip and my year so far on lakes. This is why you fish the fall, because these tanks come out to play. Let's put you back, girl. Yep, get him, get him. Get on him. I got him. Careful with him until you see him. He might take off, he might be a real big one. Check and look down at your line. Put a little less pressure on him, a little, a little bit less pressure. There you go. I'm gonna pull in here to the bank. He should, he should work himself back up the bank. Pull him hard to the right, hard into the bank. There you go. Still haven't seen this thing yet. Get it's a good anchor. fish, man. I'm gonna anchor right here, buddy. I'm gonna anchor right here. Oh, he took that, he took the nymph on the, uh, on the mend. I guess it was brown. 
He hasn't jumped either, that's the other thing. No, it's a rainbow. Nice rainbow. Good one. Nice, good job, nice stab. Nice work. Pretty stuff, man. Look at the size of that Boy, rainbow. What a great last fish. Last thing of the day, last, last few hours of the day. Sun's getting a little lower. Huh? You gotta, How do you like that? You gotta work at that, you gotta work. Put in some work. Good fish. Yeah, put in a little work. You never know what'll happen. I just be a big, beautiful cut bow like that. Fishing in Yellowstone Teton territory, you're allowed to fish with three flies. Today, we've got a terrestrial and two nymph droppers. Um, now, there's a trick to fishing three flies that you have to be careful of because you will get tangled. Uh, you need to open your loop. So in order to open your loop, you need to come over top of, it's almost like a lob. You need to lob those flies over so that your loop isn't squishy, isn't tight, and you're not gonna tangle on yourself. It's gonna save you a lot of time to catch more fish. Yeah, so looking down, you see the shelf showing up here in the middle. So we're gonna fish it off the right of us. I'll start slowing us down. We'll just set up a drift over there to the right of us. Yeah, somewhere out in there. Take him! Nice. Ew, just like that! Nice! To the dry, that's right! That's fantastic. That is absolutely amazing. It's good hope, fish too, man. I hope we got all that. Yep, so now once he's in the net, Okay, you Sweet. can hold on to him. I got him. So what we're doing is we're actually going to move over so we don't blow over all this water. Um, and then we're going to let this fish go and we're able to keep fishing. That fly just popped right out. That's awesome. Good. That's actually, actually right here. It's pretty fish. damn good. All right, so we pulled over to the side so we can look at this fish safely. And to, get, and to get a fish of this quality on a surface fly, unbeatable. Unbeatable. Yeah, Just yeah. perfect. Okay. There we okay. go. Okay. All right. Okay. So Ooh, we made a switch. Go, going right at us. All right. We made a switch. We've been fishing this dry fly all morning and uh, hadn't risen anything. So Justin said, you know what? Let's pull over, put on a couple of nymphs. Put a, so we're now fishing a three rig system, a little bit different casting technique, but you know, not two minutes, right? Two minutes. All of a sudden we're hooked up. Nice. Nice rainbow. All right. All right, I love when they go to the middle of the river like that. Yeah, me too. Shallow water fish. Okay. Now we're not, we're literally not a mile and a half from the lodge. Um, and this river's fishing really well uh, the last number of days. The weather's changed and hopefully the fishing's gonna even get better. Good, we're good. Nice. Nice, fishy. Make that reel sing. Oh, it's a beautiful song in the key of C for catch. <laughs> All right, going over here. Sweet. Right. Nicely done. Great fish. Healthy. All right, let's take okay, a look at this fish. Okay, there you go. Nice. Now, this is a hybrid. That's a good one, 17 inch fish. Great way to start the day, man. Way to go. That's an awesome, awesome animal. Cut bow. Yeah, 17 inch fish. Great way to start the day. All right, we're gonna let him go and uh, carry on down the river. Now, do you find in those back eddies these fish will come and hit it right away, or do you, do you generally throw a couple casts up there in hopes that you might lure one out? Uh, you know what I say, Mark? I say there's no usually, normally, generally right. in fishing. Good. Because I think every time different. One day I'll come down and they'll be piled in this little spot or this and that. Come down the next day, nothing happens. All right, take them. That was awesome. Good That's job, good fish. Mark. On cue. Yeah right at the base of the structure, right? Yep. We're always looking for an eat as the, as the 
as the current leaves the structure. That's right. That is the structure, is, is the current leaving the structure, if you know what I'm saying. It's an ambush point. Yes, sir. Nice fish. That is a nice fish. Hybrid. That was good timing, everything was great. Good way to start the day, man. Dry fly. There you go. Can't complain about that. You want to kiss him, Mark? No, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> This is a great situation to demonstrate how proper mending can make the difference in catching fish and dragging flies. Early in this sequence, I was mending upstream in water that is slower closer to me. A simple adjustment of mending downstream when water closest to you is slower than the main current allows the flies to drift naturally without drag and the fish respond. Leave it. Leave it. Set. There he is. Nice. Oh, what fun. It's a good fish too. Yeah. Looks very bow-like. It does. So hang on, that one's gonna have a lot more. A lot more junk? A lot more. Uh, that's Cuddy. It's hybrid. Nice cutty. Good one. They're still feeding here, too. They go right back to eating. <laughs> really, fish? Right to my feet. Likes the shadow. Oh man, that's the best one today. Hybrid. This morning, couldn't get the timing right. Takes a little practice. Once you get it down, the fishing's fantastic. Good job. Thanks, man. It's funny, you know, you see one little rise. Over there, BJ noticed it, four fish. The Snake River is known for giant brown trout. Let's take a look. Yep. Nice. Ooh, that's nice a big fish. fish. Oh my gosh, it's a giant. It's a giant. I'm gonna get this fish on the reel, it's that big. Bite him on a high rod tip. and take your time. The water's cold enough that you don't need to worry about exhausting these. Oh my gosh, Logan, it's huge. Yeah, I'm gonna pick up anchor. He ate the green bullet. Oh, I'm out of breath. I'm out of breath. There is zero saliva in my mouth. <laughs> this is a thrill of a lifetime on the South Fork. Yes! <laughs> oh, man. Are you kidding me? My man. Oh my oh. gosh, it's a stud. <laughs> I can't believe it. Biggest brown trout of my life. We fought that fish through rapids, probably, you know, a couple hundred yards yeah. down this river. And I'm here to tell you that I'm about to show you the biggest brown trout I've ever caught on fly. That's great. Are you ready? That's awesome. This is why you come to Idaho, and this is why you come to Three Rivers Ranch. What an unbelievably amazing brown trout. I'm fishing a drop off here from a rocky flat, and it's important when you approach the drop, not to just go charging in and go right to start fishing the, the obvious structure. You want to work your way out. So what I'm doing is I'm throwing these nymphs out on a tight line and working my way to the drop because just like steelhead fishing, these fish could literally be at your feet. So you don't want to overpass water that could hold fish. Work your way out. Eliminate the water that's in front of you as you get to the drop. There he is. There Just he is. like Big that. Big brownie, big brown. Big one. Let him run, buddy. 
Atta boy. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, that is a huge oh brown God. trout. <laughs> so cover water. Oh my gosh, I don't even know what to say. Man, he's still in charge. Large and in charge. Just keep walking down the shelf. Got him. Got him. Sweet. What a fish, man. Nice fish. What a fish, what a technique. What do you eat, the drown or the, uh, uh, the rubber legs? The rubber legs. How do you like that? There you go. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. What a fish. What a fisher. Big old fins, fins yeah. on him, huh? Pretty, got a little adipose going. Yeah, yeah. Got teeth on him, too. Yeah, he does. Big mouth brownie. Yes, sir. What a beauty. Thank you, sir. Good what job. What a great technique. Right on. Tons of fun. When you approach a situation like this, usually the most aggressive, biggest fish is gonna be the first one to charge the fly and eat it. So it's really important that your first cast or two is on point and your mens are good and your tension's right so you can hook them. So you can't be too casual about the first two casts. It's really important. Focus. Get a good drift, watch your indicator. Because like you saw, that was his first cast in, that, in this spot. And I'm really happy that he was ready to go. Great job. Let's do that again. There you go, good cast. There he is, there he is, we got Ooh, him. that's a big we one. We got him, strip, strip, strip. Let him run, man, let him run. <laughs> wow, what Hasht a fish. Hashtag I love my office. <laughs> great job, man, great job. That was awesome. I'm gonna go grab the net. Yeah, great. Woo. So these fish are just sitting right off this ledge. And uh, man, oh man. Anybody ever tells me that indicator fishing's dull? I got something to tell you. It's not. Not at is, all. Yeah. I'm curious to see what he ate. Oh, he ate the drowned terrestrial. Nice. He ate that sunken dry for me. Yeah. That's a good fish right there. I'm happy with that one. I'm gonna surf him over to you. Boy, did you see him jump right after you hooked him? He yeah. tore all over this place. He did. Oh, that was great. The king of the pool. Nice grab. Good job, Chris. Great job, you. Pretty work, man. You're doing everything I ask you. Sweet. And it's paying dividends. So the orange on this brown trout is absolutely remarkable. Look how orange that is. Pink hues, big old adipose fin. Fantastic, fantastic fish. Just dandy. Oh, take him. Good. You know what? <laughs> I always love it when they run to the middle of the river. <laughs> oh, you got him. Nice save, Mark. That's a tarpon move. Good job. They run, the big fish tend to do that, don't they? they? they as soon as they get hooked, they yep. run to the middle of the river. Yep. I'm gonna kind of come with you. You let me know what you need, or I can row away, or you tell me what you need. I got him. Okay. That's a nice fish, Mark. Nice brown trout. Yep. We'll get pictures of this guy for sure. And you were just saying, you know, subtle eat, right? Yep. Total I mean, that, that thing that, I, to me, it looked like a tiny fish. You know what I'm saying? All I saw was the beak. Nice. Wow, Mark. That's a long fish. Great fish, man. Look at that, Mark. Beauty. I love the blues. Yeah. The Henry's Fork fishes in the fall when the weather is absolutely snotty. Let's take a look at some of these unbelievable brown trout. Good. Because she came out from underneath that tree, didn't she? Yep, she sure did. Good one. Came out of that little hole in there. Nice. All right. Look yeah. at the weather out here. Look at how snotty it is. It's blowing 40. It's cold. It's cloudy. 
perfect brown trout weather. Yeah, with this front coming in, it's blowing these clouds in. It's got these big fish on the prow to hunt. That real bright sunny weathers, you know, that we had earlier today is gone. So, um, perfect time in the evening, that witching hour, and uh, just cloud cover. Couldn't ask for better uh, brown trout, you know, streamer weather. So, uh, hopefully, they just keep keeping it up. There he is. Nice. Oh, did you see that boil? Saw the boil and watched the eat. You ready? Take your time. Take your time. These fish are tough. It's all right. Just be easy. And that's 2x. I mean, I've had fish in here blow up zero. Okay. Come on, darling. Every bit of this six weight put to work. Saw the boil. Yes! Look at that. Unbelievable. Man, this is turning out to be an absolutely unbelievable evening here on the Henry's Fork. Upstream of Mesa Falls is Box Canyon, a fantastic fishery for rainbows and big ones at that. I was off a push. You know, it's amazing to see where fish will locate with respect to a gravel bed or a boulder pool. Take a look at this animation to see exactly where these rainbows are living. As water rushes downstream in a river system, the contours and physical makeup of the river create suitable pockets of less current resistance. These places are key holding spots for fish. One of the most overlooked areas to find trout is directly in front of rocks or boulders. As the water comes in contact with a piece of structure, it basically comes to a direct stop before it peels left, right, over, or under the structure. This is called a hydro cushion and is a very comfortable place for fish to lay effortlessly, awaiting food to drift by. So there you have it. Anytime you have a boulder field that has a ton of rock structure in it, don't discount the front of those rocks because that's where oftentimes it's easiest for these fish to hang out and feed. Nice fish. fish. That's a good one. It is a good one. On the push. On the push. You know, there are 6,000 fish per mile here on the upper Henry's Fork, but the good thing is, is that you can catch a ton of them. A lot of them may not be giants, but you do have the opportunity to lock horns with a true big rainbow trout, just like we've got here. You hit the bullet on the bottom. Yeah, Thanks good for fish, man. Now, how does this rate for a Henry's Fork fish where we are? We, we are uh, up here. That would be a large, large rainbow. Very good. Fat. There's nothing quite like watching a cutthroat trout come up and slowly suck in your water walker or your terrestrial. Let's take a look at some of these more memorable fish. As we were having lunch, there was a bunch of blue wing olives that went off. We started seeing fish coming up and BJ noticed a riser over here out of the boat over by these, these logs and it wasn't too cast and we managed to get ourselves a cutthroat on the, on the blue wing olive too. All right, that was fun. Good work. 
Good eyes, man. Thank you. Yeah. Fly pops out. How do you like that on dry fly? That's fantastic. That's absolutely amazing. Thank you, sir. Well, shake your hand with a fly. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. Oh, that was not on the October caddis. <laughs> That was not. That was on. Oh, that's a good fish. That is a good fish. That's a really good fish. That's a good fish, yeah. Good. He took off like a banshee. <laughs> Knock me over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was so this is 4X on here, right? Uh, or is it down to five? Five. I went back to five. That's the best fish of the day right it there is. so far. So far. Oh man. And they're still and then they're back to feeding again. Yeah. Yeah my. What a fish. That's a purebred too. All right, let's take a look at this guy. About a 20 inch cutty. 20 inch cutthroat. How do you like that? You put your time in and you will be rewarded. You gotta be ready when fishing small stream cutthroat. Um, generally, your first cast is your best cast. Um, so when you're ready to, to lay one in there, you gotta be ready to do the dance right away because it could happen immediately just like that. Ooh, good fish. Really good. Oh, this is a beautiful cutthroat. Took the nymph. We're fishing a hopper dropper system today. You stay out of there, please. Oh my goodness, this five weight is working out. Come on, buddy. Stick with me, pal. In small streams, it does not get any better than this. Absolutely amazing. Whew, skinny, skinny water, big, fat cutthroat. Pop out that little, it's actually a jig, a jig nymph. It's got a tungsten head and a uh, little bit of blue flash, 18 inches underneath the ant. Took this absolute stud of a cutthroat in a small stream doesn't get better than that. All right, let's let this big girl go. In a little further, I think. Got him, got him. Ate the emerger. Yeah. That's the benefit, man, of, of fishing these cutthroat with the double fly rig. Awesome. Is, uh, you know, you got two shots. You're covering the water column. Even though that our dropper is only three inches below the dry, they come up and eat it. And uh, it's super fun. In this clear water, you can watch them feed. It's ideal. That was a great take. Way to let him eat it. Yeah, you do have to pause. That's bigger than I thought it was, Chris. Nice one. Okay, here we go. Nice fish. But we did a great job on waiting and letting him eat it that time. Got a good cast down river to him. Got to watch him come to get it. Awesome, great job. Here you go, buddy. Cool, great. Next. <laughs> That's a good fish. That's a happy fish. Yeah. Nice, nice. Ooh. Might have been a hair close to him that time. Let's just let it go and see. See how his his mannerism and body language changed right as the flies landed? Yeah. He moved a lot more water. Take him. Yeah. Strip, strip, strip. Yeah. That's a big fish, man. 
Nice. We've watched this fish from yards up. It's a beauty. Feeding and getting happy. That's a beauty. And I thought I screwed up the cast by putting the fly too close to this. Oh my gosh, what a gorgeous cutthroat. Look at that thing. Trophy cutthroat on the Teton River. Look at that. That's oh, a big young. fish, man. Oh man, look at this one. There we go. Big wild cutthroat. Great job, Mark. Well, you made some improvements to your cast and got the flies turned over perfectly. I'll tell you, well, we, we laid it in a little too close to him there at first and he spooked for a second. I thought he wasn't gonna come and grab it, but you did a good job to leave it there and let him come and take it. Great job. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of The New Fly Fisher. Thanks for watching. For more in our series, check us out at www.thenewflyfisher.com. We had an unbelievable number of seasons traveling up and down Highway 20, catching and releasing some true giants. My name is Mark Melnick. Remember, adventure is out there. All you need to do is go and find it. And what better way than to do it with a fly rod on your hand? For all of us at the show, thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll see you down the road in Yellowstone Teton territory. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Visit Idaho Yellowstone Teton Territory Orvis Fly Fishing Scientific Anglers Trout Unlimited WeatherTech Canada